Hello everyone, thank you for joining. This is Content Security Policy the Easy Way. So during this talk, we're gonna talk about what makes content security policy so difficult. We're gonna talk about a tool that was developed for making CSP easier. Uh, we're gonna go through a full demo of installing content security policy on a production website using Casper and including a fake XSS and to see how you can have continued monitoring on your website. Uh, if you're only interested in the product demo, uh, in the description of this video, I'll include a link so you can just jump right to the demo. So a uh, little bit about me. Uh, my name is Stuart Larson. I'm currently the founder of Casper. Uh, before Casper, I was the lead security engineer for our cloud products at MongoDB. Uh, so I included like making sure our websites were secure. Uh, before then, I was a penetration tester, meaning my full-time job was breaking into websites and different products and finding vulnerabilities. And before that, I was a developer at a, a number of different software companies. In my free time, I enjoy building and participating in cross-site, or sorry, uh, CTFs, which are Sandfield's Cap to the Flag. They're a set of security challenges for breaking into websites and memory corruption and crypto challenges. So jumping into it, uh, why is CSP hard? Uh, and I think this question can kind of be split into two different things. I think it's the actual setup that's hard and also the ongoing maintenance that's hard. And it's two different problems. In the the initial setup, I think the setup is hard because, or getting started with CSP is hard because the web and browser security model is pretty complex. Um, same origin policy and understanding the different relationships between where content can and can't be loaded and what the ramifications of those uh, of that content is, is, is very tricky to do correctly. Um, Google did some analysis and showed that 95% of websites that rolled out CSP uh, did it in such a way that they weren't getting the primary benefit of CSP, which is protection against an attack called uh, XSS, um, which is unfortunate. It means a lot of people are trying to do things correctly and uh, it's not working out for them. Um, and I think the second thing that makes CSP difficult is the ongoing maintenance. Uh, once you've rolled out a restrictive and valid CSP policy, any new content that is rolled out on the website must also be included within the CSP policy. And if you don't, uh, things can break. So I think it's common, like I see from websites I've run that have CSP and from uh, my clients and coworkers that have also run CSP that a new marketing script or a new embedded video or a new font, how many styles will be rolled out to production without being included in the content security policy and the production website um, will we'll either go down or not work correctly, and that'll drive away traffic, um, which can be a very frustrating place to be. So uh, Casper aims to address these two challenges. Um, the goal of Casper is to make content security policy as simple and easy as possible. Um, so Casper is a set of security to tools around content security policy, and the core of Casper uses this uh, feature within content security policy called the report URI. Uh, basically, as a website owner, you can configure it such that when clients connect to your website and download that content security policy, you can say, hey, browser, if you detect any discrepancy between what the website is giving you and what my policy says, uh, let me know through this report URI. And you can see an example report URI down here. So this is a full content security policy policy. Um, and so we can see like default source, I allow resources from self, script source from these different origins, um, styles, blah, blah, blah. Uh, here the report URI which says like, hey, if you ever notice on a web page that there's a violation of this policy, let me know here. And what will happen is the browser will send to this JSON body uh, to that endpoint and it'll include a bunch of different information. And we're gonna look into that information in the product demo. And using this information, Casper collects and aggregates and analyzes these thousands to potentially millions of reports uh, and provides actual insight uh, that you, the website owner, can use to make your website more secure. And if something does break, to quickly fix it and be notified of uh, the issues. Uh, and then once Casper is rolled out, you have CSP enabled. Um, Casper is also very good at alerting you when there is an actual security issue. Like the whole goal of content security policy is preventing uh, these content injection attacks. And so when Casper detects a content injection attack, it'll alert you immediately, uh, show you where in the page it was, uh, and so you can actually fix it. Because uh, content security policy is only a defense in depth mechanism. At the end of the day, it's no substitute for having a well-built and secure website. So cool, uh, let's go to the demo. So we're going to be installing content security policy on Casper itself. Um, in the future, I think I'm gonna do other websites. If you'd like to watch me install CSP or generate a policy for another website, please either email me at stuart at casper.io or leave a comment below and I'll do that in a future video. But for today, we're gonna do Casper. Uh, I use a Chrome extension in the video, uh, it's called Casper. Um, you can download it here. Um, I already have it installed. Um, but using this Chrome extension, um, what I can do is Normally, CSP is installed from the web server to the browser, 
Um, but that can be kind of a slow process every time you have to like update the web server and reboot it. So it generates or it sends back that new HTTP header with this Chrome extension, you can actually dynamically change the CSP for this web page uh, uh, in real time, uh, which is very cool. You can find Casper here at casper.io. Um, and we're going to be installing CSP here. So first, let's see what the current policy is. Uh, like I said, CSP is installed through the HTTP header. These are the response headers for this domain. And we can see that there is no content security policy. And we can check here too. Casper has this free tool called Evaluator. Um, I can try to run it and no policies were found at the URL. So there is no CSP installed on this domain. And so now we're going to go through the process of for the entire process of installing CSP. So uh, first thing we need to do is log in. So Casper uses Google OAuth. Um, just sign in with any account. And let's create a new project. Uh, that was me trying to install CSP on, <laughs> on Google. So uh, we're going to call this Casper Prod. I'm going to use a personal account. You can do this with the free account, uh, but there's one feature in personal that I want to show off that uh, uh, makes it a little bit better. So finalize billing. I use Stripe. This is like on my real production website. Um, so <laughs> there's no cheat codes for this. And we're paying. Cool. So Casper has, by default, a 14-week trial. So as long as you cancel before the 14 days, uh, which I'll do at the end of this video, uh, it, it obviously doesn't charge you. So uh, welcome to Casper. This is the main dashboard. Um, this is the unique report URI for this project. And so that means you want to send all of your violation reports to this URI, and Casper will start performing analysis on them. So if you are just playing with Casper and you want to get started, you can send some example reports to that URI uh, and kind of play around with it. Uh, we're not going to do that. We're actually going to be testing the policy with a Chrome extension, which already installed. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to grab it here. And so this policy says allow anything for default source from self, so from the same origin, script source from self, and include a sample of the violation if possible. So if it's an inline report, it'll include the first 40 characters of the JavaScript that uh, tripped the content security policy. Same with the style source. Uh, base URI uh, set to none, object source is set to none, and here's the report URI. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy this and we're going to place this into that Chrome extension. So we're going to enable it. I'm going to leave it in report only mode. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to start refreshing. So I'm going to go to the real time panel. So this is capturing reports in real time as I like go around the page. I click on different things. Um, I see what's going on. Uh, people are running. Uh, this is like what the old policy looked like on CSP. Um, this uh, clicking this page is load stripe. So really I'm just trying to grab as much different content as possible um, so that we see just have a huge diversity of different types of reports. Cool. So at this point we probably have all the reports we want, all the different reports. Uh, and we see 35 unique reports and 164 or 175 reports in total. So, and we can see we have base UI reports, connect source, font source, frame source, image source, script source, style source, and more. So cool. So now that we have all of these reports, um, you can see Casper automatically groups similar reports together. So like this is a connect source. So API HubSpot, live chat. So I think this is a WebSocket. Um, so mm, Casper.io is using WebSockets to communicate to API HubSpot.com. Um, and there were five instances of this happening. So we can see what this report looks like. So these are the, the example violation report that's sent from a browser to Casper. Um, Casper grouped the five of them together to show that I had five uh, let's do it by hour five, one minute ago. Um, and cool, we can also see that it came from Chrome Mac OS desktop, which is obviously my system. So now let's uh, let's start building out a policy. So uh, first thing we said, uh, connect source, so rsfullstory.com. Uh, yes, I use full story on my domain. So that looks like a valid connect source. So I'm gonna accept it. And what's gonna happen now is that just added, got added to my policy right here. Uh, next is another connect source for HubSpot. Looks good to me. Another connect source for HubSpot. Looks good to me. Next, font source. Um, so I load some inline uh, fonts from uh, the data scheme. Looks good to me. Next is frame source app HubSpot. Looks good to me. Uh, Stripe also loads in an iframe. Looks good. Uh, some images. Uh, HubSpot. HubSpot forms. I'm not sure what this image is about, but sure, works for me. And Google Analytics. Next, we have some script tags. Um, so again, everything is a balance between usability and security. Uh, you, for script tags, scripts are a script source is a sensitive directive, so you want to be as specific as possible. Um, if you're not specific, it can potentially lead you open to some content reflection attacks, such as JSONP. 
Um, but at the same time, you don't want to have to update your CSP every day or whenever HubSpot decides that they want to change one of these numbers. Um, so what I usually like to do is I like to just go as specific as possible up until it doesn't include like a version tag or something like that. So JS HubSpot, Hubs, uh, HubSpot analytics.net slash analytics. So we're going to accept that. Uh, Google Tag Manager looks good. Uh, use message. Yep. Uh, collected forms looks good. Full story looks good. Um, looks looks like it has a specific version number. Um, it is unfortunate that it's on the root of the domain like this. This is definitely one of those bounces between usability and security. I think that since this origin is a JS sourcing origin, I don't think it's going to have any JSONP on it, but it, it would be good something to investigate. Uh, include it. Uh, yep, Stripe looks good. Uh, script source analytics looks good. And base URI of self looks good. So bam, just like that, we have a policy. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take this policy and we're going to put it in here. And again, we're going to go and load a bunch of different content. We can see we're still generating reports. So we're going to go fix those in a second. Um, play around, get started free. Uh, tool, Casper prod, click about a bunch of different stuff. I should have been using a, a real time in there, but now we got it. Cool. So we generated a whole bunch of new reports with our new policy. And we can see our new policy here. Um, this is the policy we just generated, and with this new policy, we just generated five new uh, 55 new uh, reports. So we can have a look at these reports. Uh, let's click here. So we have an inline style, a bunch of inline styles, style, 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 a whole bunch of inline style. Uh-oh. So, so this is where CSP gets a little bit difficult. So CSP's primary um, motivation is to prevent this uh, web vulnerability known as cross-site scripting or prevent the exploitation of the web vulnerability of cross-site scripting. And to do that, normally in an XSS or cross-site scripting, um, JavaScript is injected directly into the DOM. It's either injected into the DOM or reflected into the DOM. Um, and content security policy takes the stance that there shouldn't be any JavaScript directly within the DOM. It says that instead all JavaScript and style sheets uh, should be instead loaded from a JS file or a CSS file that's included on the same origin or an origin that you specify. So that just means no inline handlers, so like no on-click handlers, no inline style sheets, no inline styles on elements, um, none of that, which is which is a, a big ask. Thankfully, a lot of more modern websites, such as I built this website in Angular, Angular.io, Angular 8, and a front-end framework such as React, um, they actually handle a lot of this stuff for you. Uh, and so as you can see, this website by default doesn't have any inline JavaScript. Um, which makes the rollout on an Angular or uh, uh, React website or any modern framework uh, much simpler, uh, thankfully, than it used to be. Uh, but I still have the style source. Uh, style source isn't as sensitive as a directive. Um, it would be nice if I could configure Angular to instead uh, inject these correctly, but it's not the biggest in deal if I include style source uh, unsafe inline on the style source. So to get rid of these, um, what I'll do is I'll go over to style source. and do unsafe inline. Cool, and so now I'll go through and I'll make sure there's no new uh, violation reports anywhere on the website. And if that works out, I think we are done generating our policy. So now that we have CSP rolled out on our website, uh, we're going to pretend that we've released a new feature and this new feature has an XSS in it. And we're gonna see how Casper and CSP work together to prevent the execution and also notify us that there's a vulnerability within our website. So let's say we just rolled out a new feature that allowed people to comment on other people's policies. I don't know why you'd want that, but we're gonna add it. Oh, and first thing we need to do is make sure we have CSP. It's in report only mode. I'm going to show report only mode and then what it looks like when it's actually enabled. Uh, and we're going to do a couple of things. We're also going to use a feature of Casper. So Casper has this uh, monitoring feature. Uh, and what happens is it will send you a report whenever um, it finds a policy it's never seen before. Oh, sorry, a report it's never seen before. Um, so right now, any new report it's never seen is going to send an email to Stuart at Casper. We're going to check notifications are off. Cool. Uh, and let's get started. So we're going to embed, uh, let me refresh, make sure everything's cool. Yep, real time, policy, report only. So we're going to embed this vulnerability, again, a fake vulnerability, uh, that is HTML. And what happens here is it's a comment field. So people can add comments. You can see this is already uh, injecting stuff. Um, issues, but this is an XSS and you uh, this is vulnerable to XSS and so you can imagine you could do something like you've been hacked 
obviously this is JavaScript execution, and so uh, this is actually nasty stuff. Um, using JavaScript, I could do anything that uh, I wanted on the page, like steal cookies or uh, do like credit card skimming, um, stuff like that. If Casper accepts your credit cards, it doesn't. But if it did, credit card skimming, um, pretty much a whole bunch of nasty stuff. Um, cool. So we saw that a report was generated. Um, thankfully, an email was also sent, uh, which should be coming through uh, any second now, um, that a uh, vulnerability was exploited. Cool. So that's what it looks like if you're in report only mode. If you are in full blocking mode, um, the issue won't even get through. Uh, instead, we're going to inject. We're now in full blocking with CSP. We're going to edit as HTML. We're going to put in that same vulnerability. And as soon as we try to do anything, a report is generated. I can't even add these comments because technically it's an eval. Uh, yeah, nothing's happening, uh, which is very cool. We just prevented an XSS, uh, but an email was sent. So now that CSP is rolled out, you'll get a notification whenever there's someone trying to do something nasty on your website. And so you can fix the underlying issue because content security policy is defense in depth. Uh, really, the, the core thing is to keep your website secure in the first place. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you have any comments, uh, please feel free to reach me. Um, you can either reach me on this like intercom thing or email me at stuart at casper.io or uh, leave a comment in the video. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. If you have any recommendations for websites you'd like to see me install uh, CSP on, um, uh, let me know and I'll, I'll give it a shot. Thank you.